Hey guys, today I wanted to share some of my favorite math resources with you guys and do a Friday flip through of some of those resources showing you inside the books, inside the boxes, how the games work, etc. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video from my channel just so you're prepared. But summer is just a time that I think we all uh, try to focus in if we are going to put effort into something it is going to be putting effort into subjects where our kids may be struggling or really reinforcing some um, skills that they may be lacking in or maybe not totally solid in and for me I tend to focus on the math skills that I want my kids to either keep up with or sharpen and so I am constantly collecting math resources, math games, math books uh, just so that we always have a way to keep up with math. So my kids have used teaching textbooks since uh, they are in second grade on and then before that they use horizons math so horizons is a workbook and then teaching textbooks is online or on a tablet and so they never use manipulatives with either of those and so i have just always brought in games and activities and books to keep things fun and to give another style of learning a shot when it comes to math so they're constantly reinforcing their math skills here at our house so I wanted to share, and this is not gonna be an exhaustive list, this is just going to be the resources that I either recommend most or get asked about a lot or that I have warm feelings toward, meaning I am gravitating toward these things because they are fun, they are enjoyed, well-loved in our home, and they help with crucial skills. So uh, here is a flip through of some of my favorite math resources. All right, guys. So I have split this up into four different categories. So I've got workbooks, I have games, manipulatives, and also regular on the shelf books that I have been collecting over the last 10 years. So it's going to be a little bit like drinking from a fire hose. I have a lot of resources to share, but when you keep in mind that I have kids all across the board, different age and uh, grade levels in different math skills at the moment, um, I thought I would have almost a resource for everyone. So whether you're doing money or telling the time or you're all the way up into fractions and decimals and upper level math, you might find something that you're interested in. So I thought I would divide it up in those categories. So I'm gonna start with activity books because those tend to be my absolute favorite. So the first activity book that I have to show you is this math puzzle pad. Now this I have for my son Eli. I just love how bright these colors are. It's really fun. So for example, write the numbers one, two, three, or four in the empty squares without repeating a number in any row or column. The numbers in each outline set of squares should add up to the small number in the corner of the set. I like this for summer because it makes math fun. I like visuals. I like, um, I like when it kind of moves through different skills. It's not just focusing on one particular skill and it feels like a fun road trip kind of book. Help Suki cross the freezing water by drawing a line to mark her route. She can only step safely on ice flow shapes that just have a single line of symmetry. Her first step has been shown for you. So that's interesting. Help Ferdy cross the pond to reach Filbert. He can only hop onto lily pads whose numbers can be divided by four. So this is fun and a nice way to work on different math skills across the board if your kids are um, just needing some general practice or just to keep up with math skills throughout the course of the summer versus honing in on one particular topic. Draw the finishing touches on the cupcakes below using as many decorations from the jars as possible to make them extra special. All three cakes must have the same amount of each decoration though, so count carefully before you begin. So that is the math puzzle pad. Next I have the times tables practice pad. Now this obviously is to practice times tables, multiplication. This is something that I always feel like my kids could use some reinforcement in. None of my kids have ever been very quick with their multiplication. They always have taken a pause and have thought about it. So for that reason, I have 
so many <laughs> multiplication resources in our house and it's something that I always want them to just be doing for fun. So fill in the blank sections of the number wheel so that multiplying the number in the inner ring by four gives the number in the outer ring. Write the missing numbers in the boxes to complete the multiplication. There's word problems back there, speed calculation, see if you can finish it in two minutes. I love the word problems. I like reinforcing skills when it's done in a way that's very low pressure. So this book and the colorful illustrations and just the, you know, jumping from one way of doing multiplication to another just keeps it from being a little too aggressive, I think, for my kids. So that is the times tables practice pad. Now I love these activity books so much and i wish that there were more of them there used to be so many more but right now there's just uh, the three i'm about to show you on the website so if this is something you're interested in i would encourage you to grab it uh, even if it's something that you're not quite in yet because i just i don't know if they're discontinuing this or what so graphs and charts activity book let me see if i can get past what's been done here maybe not there we go Again, bright illustrations, lots of fun stuff going on here. Pie charts, count the number of each type of animal using the tally chart, shade in the right size slice for each type on the pie chart. Got a quick quiz. We've got Venn diagram. So that's a really fun way to learn about graphs and charts. Look at the gems in the minds below, then fill in the answers for each. So there's that one, graphs and charts activity book. Then again, I've got multiplying and dividing activity book. Has anyone used this one yet? No, I have multiple copies of each of these, so I tried to grab ones that are still blank, but I might you might see some filled in pages as we go through here. So counting in groups, multiplication, number lines. This is a fun one. This maze, getting through the maze. Adding from the sticker page, so each dog has two bows. Let's see if I can. There's the bows right there. This is the whole sticker page here. These are the kind of workbooks I just like to have in the summertime because for some reason, you know, if you make math fun like this, my kids will do it no problem and they are not even really thinking about the fact that it is schoolwork. And like I said, I have so many of these on hand. I just think they're so fun to have uh, to make it something that they can work on without being too overwhelming for them. And then I have adding and subtracting activity book. It's the same deal. Very fun, very colorful. That's a fun page. Oh, it's been done already, okay. Oh yeah, this one has been worked on a little bit. <laughs> I thought it wasn't, but I guess they skipped around to different pages. I always just feel like if math was presented this way to me when I was in elementary school, I would have enjoyed it even more. Now I always did enjoy math, but I just would have enjoyed it that much more. I love the wipe clean books. These are also from Usborne. Um, I, sh I grabbed money to show you, but there's also some beginning math books for like preschool, kindergarten age, but I got this money one for Eli. So going shopping, the monster's next stop is the monster supermarket. Can you work out how much each monster will need to pay? How much do my things cost altogether? So here's 
some practice using coins. And then these are something that you can invest in and use for many kids down the road. And then here's another one. This is the last activity book I'm showing you. Um, this one is something that um, just kind of reinforces, again, different math skills across the board. So it's the number puzzles and games. And this one has filling in the squares. Let's see. Dot to dots. Counting by fours. There is a pencil and paper game. Sudoku, number crisscross, pairs, shading, solution search. That's a fun one. So some of these are games, some of them are puzzles. I actually have this one coming with us on a road trip soon. But I'm thinking that this is kind of what is starting to phase out some of those other activity books that I used to really like. So there is number puzzles and games. And now I will show you some of the manipulatives we really like. All right. So uh, first I want to mention, I forgot to say this earlier, that this is more elementary level stuff that I'm showing you today. If you guys are interested in me doing like a preschool favorites or a preschool flip through of just books and games I really like for preschool in general I can do that as well but when it comes to manipulatives I have so many more for preschool like sorting and um, patterning and things like that but it would be like half of this video just showing preschool stuff so let me know if you uh, are interested in any of that but this is the arithmetic wheel I think it's from it's called Myris toys or Miris toys I'm not sure uh, so I got this on Etsy. So I got the full set. So I've got division here. I've got addition, multiplication, subtraction, and then here are the center coins. So what you do for this is you take a center coin. So say I want to do 10. You put that in the center there. And then say multiplication. Dump this out. All right, so then I would take the multiplication symbol and stick it there. So then we've got 10 times. So then you're going to go all the way through 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times 3, and they're going to place these coins down there. Now, depending on the age of each of my kids that are using this, I will go through and sort these out ahead of time so that they don't have like, you know, 100 little coins to sort through. Um, but I will throw in some that are not correct as well so they don't just do like, you know, deductive. <laughs> Um, math. So we've got like 10 times 2 is 20. Oh, here's 10. Uh, let me see. We've got some. We've got 90 here. Um, 110. So this is the same uh, with the addition and the subtraction and the uh, division that they would have all of the different answers in here. And now the division one includes fractions which I think makes it even more difficult that it's not just whole numbers. So you've got the fractions there on one side. Is it going to focus? And then on the other side, you have the decimals. So that is a very helpful resource and one of my favorites to pull out when I just feel like we're having a... Uh, a paper and pencil kind of math block. We will go ahead and pull this out. And it's something that all of my kids really enjoy. So even when they finish a full math lesson, it can be used in our house as a reward while other kids are working on other subjects. So this is a favorite. It's one though that I use with supervision because if you lose one piece, in my mind, you mess the whole thing up. All right, next I have this learning palette. I'm gonna show you the second grade set, but I also wanted to show you that I have some different sets that go all the way up to um, geometry and measurement, multiplication and division. So you've got um, dimensions, perimeter, 
symmetry, thermometers, division fact families, dividing two digits by one digit, etc. So there's a lot more options and they also have some younger versions as well, but I thought second grade was somewhere right in between. Now this is another Osborne resource. Um, so the way that this works is it's a self-correcting game. So for example, you have some patterns here. Let me see how quickly I can do this on the camera here. Okay, there we go, I did the puzzle. So you've got some patterns here. So you've got heart, rectangle, rectangle, moon, heart. So this would be rectangle. So you put the open circle on the rectangle, rectangle, then this would be moon. So you would put the closed circle on the moon. And then you go ahead and do that for all the patterns. And then when you flip the card over, there's this little tab down here that latches into here. So you make sure you have it right. And then you can go around and check your work. So you've got the solid circle, the open circle, solid circle, solid, solid. And then you can just check your work that way. So for this set, the set includes some fractions. This one has some missing numbers. This one has less than and more than, more or less than and more than. You have the value of the underlined number. I'm trying to read this through the screen. It's not very easy. <laughs> find the sum, find the difference, the pattern and fill in the missing numbers. So this really goes through quite a few skills and then that's the end of it. So that is the second grade set. So now for this, you would need one base and at least one base. So like I have this base that I think I bought with like the kindergarten set. And then I just buy these and these different packs work with the same base. Okay, and then the last manipulative that I have to show you that is the only item I'm showing you that's brand new. So we don't have any track record with this yet, but I know I, I definitely foresee one. I think I'll be recommending these quite a bit. Most of you saw this in my homeschool convention hall, but I will link that up here if you haven't seen that yet. These are Melissa and Doug math gears. So I have multiplication, I have division, addition, and subtraction. The division one is currently being used by Eli. We are packing for a road trip, and he asked if that could be the thing he put in his bag. So there's just proof of how loved these are already. So these I like because they're like flashcards, but at least for me, one of the reasons I like this the most is that it's bound, and so you can't lose them but they are just uh, fast fact multiplication. So each page has, let me go to something other than one. We all know our ones times tables. Okay, so say you flip to the page, that's the number three. So one times three, and then you flip this, then you can go to two times three. And I just think this is the coolest thing ever. And so do my kids. So I really like this. This is going to have a permanent place on our shelf. And like I said, they've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And they are sturdy. And hopefully, because I, I always lose flashcards. For some reason, we'll play a game with them, or we will do like a buzzer game, or go outside and do some kind of outdoor activity with them where you can like advance around the bases or something, and we'll lose one somewhere. So. I thought that these were neat because they're bound. So that's my favorite thing about them, but my kids just think they're super cool. So there are those. Now I will link all of these resources down below. I purchased these from Miller Pads and Paper, and I'm not sure if they have a website. They probably do. Uh, so I will link that below if I find the website. Otherwise, I will link these to Amazon, but I don't think they're on Amazon Prime. So just a heads up, but these are so cool. These would be really cool to throw in, in your purse if you go to a restaurant or you're at like a kid's sports game or something and you need something for your younger kids to do. Really cool option here. All right, moving into books, which are my favorite resource to have on hand. These two are a must in my opinion. So this is the Illustrated Elementary Math Dictionary and then this is the Illustrated Dictionary of Math. The difference mostly being elementary and then also you have the recommended websites in here. So I'll start with the elementary math dictionary. So you can just search by theme or subject topic. If you need a reminder, say on hmm, 
if you need a reminder on, let's say like perimeter. All right, perimeter is page 108. So you would then go to 108. And there is your help on perimeter, or you can start from the beginning and just go all the way through. So if your kids need a reminder on something and you want to say something along the lines of, go grab the book and check it out, see if that helps, and if not, I will help you, like I do. Um, or if you need something to cross-reference, like I also do on occasion, this is a really great book to have on the shelf. And then you also have the Illustrated Dictionary of Math. And from here you have all sorts of stuff that is beyond the elementary math dictionary. So you've got cones, angles in a circle, measurement, distributive property, algebraic graphs, exponential graphs. I am for sure going to need this to help <laughs> Isabella when she gets older because if she comes to me with needing help with any of this stuff, I am going to mentally shut down. So. This can be for you, mom, or this can be for your kids, but these are two super helpful resources. Now, my absolute most favorite books from Usborne are the Lift the Flaps, 100% forever. The Lift the Flap books are so fun. So I've got Lift the Flap telling the time here. There are always so many flaps to lift and they are just so much fun. It's got what's on a clock, telling the hours. Weeks, months, and years, a time challenge. So there's that one. Next, I have the lift the flap numbers, which I've used now with Eli and Annie for preschool. This is such a cute book. So they can count and check their numbers down here. This is one of Annie's favorites. As you can tell, there's, I think there's food stuck. There was food stuck under one of these. It's just, you know, I just, I think the illustrations give it such a boost. The super bright colors are just so engaging. So that's probably one of the reasons that I was drawn to these books and the activity books. Because when I, again, when I think back to being a kid, that's what would captivate me as well. There's also Lift the Flap First Math. You got some simple addition. Busy boats, you can check your answers down here. Oh, I remember doing this with Eli too, that's kind of, bittersweet. This flower shop page was always one of my favorites. So you've got, you count these, seven plus one equals eight. So almost every page feels like a game, which I love the Lift the Flat books for that reason. They're just so highly engaging. Math Shapes is a new addition to our home in the last year or so. So you've got water shapes, flat shapes, solid shapes, symmetrical shapes, patterns, tessellations, turns, angles, shapes challenge, tangram challenge, or a glossary. I just like how Osborne makes these books lift the flat books for big kids, you know? When you think back to lift the flat books, you think of like, where's little mouse? Find little mouse. But I mean, you don't think of symmetrical shapes and turns and angles. It's just super cool. These are always good to have in the car as well. And these have come with us countless times to dance class and karate. Then here's the challenge in the back here. Fractions and decimals. So 
we've got a pizzeria, we've got what are fractions, naming fractions, this is a cool page. So we've got sixths, and then you have, you lift three of them, and it's three sixths, it's the same as one half. Let me see if I can get at this. Two sixths was one third. I think that's super neat. Cool visuals in here. Sorting fractions. Can you guys see how many lip flap lifts there are to flap flaps there are to lift? <laughs> Too many for me to show in the video. But this is just to give you an overview. Decimals, percentages, it's like a box of chocolates here. Three one hundredths is three percent. Fourteen one hundred or sixteen one hundredths is sixteen percent. Where's the next one? Here's one. Seven one hundredths, seven percent. Conversion chart, fraction challenge. Lift the flap, adding and subtracting. Ooh, this one's gotten a lot of use. And then sizes and measuring, which was always one of my favorites. So it's feed, find the animals, the tall giraffe, the low branch, the high branch. In the kitchen, you've got few, many, more, less, empty, full. In the playground, how many blocks wide is the playhouse? How many blocks wide is the window? Long and short. Which dog is longer? Which child is the tallest? On the farm? At the dog show. So those are some of my favorite Lift the Flap math books. But another book that I really enjoy is Musical Multiplication from The Good and the Beautiful. So this is really great for memorizing the times tables. So when you buy this, you also download an MP3 and it sets all of these images to music. My kids have really, actually Annie, Annie was like two. Yeah, Annie had just turned two and these songs were some of the first songs she had learned and it was one of my favorite things, one of my favorite uh, tricks to, to show off with her was to ask her the questions and have her answer times tables. It, if you ever need to impress somebody who doesn't believe in homeschooling, have your two-year-old sing multiplication facts and people will be like, okay, <laughs> no more questions. So this was like three times three is nine, nine monkeys on a vine and six times six is 36. Dad has, is it dad, dad or Dan has 36 clocks to fix. So it goes through uh, five times three is 15, but then it's not gonna do three times five. So it teaches every combination of uh, multiplication, but only one way. So if you say what's three times five, they're gonna know it by five times three, but this was a great confidence booster for my kids when it came to multiplication and it's one of my favorite resources anything set to music is great and then you have these if you want to make flashcards in the back and it goes through all of the different uh, math facts so i know some people have mixed feelings on this but my kids are very musical and visual learners as well so the combination was just perfect for us so this stays in our morning basket and every so often, I think at this point, I would say truthfully, we probably only pull this out once or twice a month anymore, but the first year we used it, we used it every single morning and our team captain for the day would pick whether we did set A, B, C, or D and they would hold the picture and that was something to be proud of. So um, that is my last book to show you as far as like absolute most favorite math books. All right, it's game time, which I have a feeling is probably the most favorite uh, or most anticipated part of this. Now, just so you know, in the fall, I will be sharing all of my, like my top 10 favorite learning games, but today I'm just sharing a few math selections, so you might see a couple of these again. So I've got these learning resources. We've got Pop for Addition and Subtraction and IC10. 
So this one, I see 10 is you take turns flipping cards and you see and grab combinations that make 10, reel in the most combinations. So as you are flipping these over, oops, you can't tell which is, okay. So as you're flipping these over, you try to find combinations of 10. So you'd be like, Oh wait, no. Yeah, like I see 10 and then you'd grab eight and two. Then you keep going. Are these both sixes? Yeah, that was confusing me. Oh, gotta put them back. And then you keep going. Oh, nine times one, I see 10, or nine plus one, I see 10. So you grab that. So that is I see 10. And then pop for addition and subtraction. is bubble gum. You spin the spinner, it tells you how many pieces of gum to get, so you grab two. And then if you get them right, so you've got three plus one is four, and then you've got eight minus seven is one, you got them right, you get to keep them, spin again. The next person gets one, 10 minus three is seven, they get to keep that, and then you keep going until somebody gets pop, which means that they have to put, uh, they take this pop card out, but then they put all the gumballs back, and you're supposed to keep going until you get all of the gumballs and all the pops out of there, but we have never actually finished. We just set a timer and play for like 10 minutes and then get whoever has the most gumballs after 10 minutes. That's a really fun one and that's one that we used a lot at the end of last school year just to pull out for a couple of minutes. Another one, now you guys have seen this for years on my channel, but Math Dice Junior is a favorite absolute favorite like favorite of favorites so simple so you roll this and you're supposed to have mark little markers but we end up just using whatever we can find because we lost the little cardboard pieces probably within a week of having it so i got the number six and you roll that and you try to use the most dice you can to make six so i could do five plus one if i wanted to i'd get two dice or I could do three times two and I would get six. Or I could do, let's see, I was gonna do something, what was it gonna be? Five plus three is eight, minus two is six. So then I would get three, see? And then I would move three spaces for getting three. So you just try to make the combination, the most, the, use the most dice to make the combination to get that number. Now, we play at very low pressure. I give my kids as much time as they need to make, or when they're young, as much time as they need to make the combination that they want the most. But that is a huge favorite. This is always around somewhere in our school room. Monster Sock Factory is so much fun. This is a multiplication game. So... I'm a little rusty on this. These ones are additional cards that you can add in, these little pieces that we don't usually use. So for this one, you are trying, basically trying to rush and get these socks out of the factory. So 35 socks, you have an order for 35 socks. So you can use a combination of, this is like a little cheat sheet down here, either this little mouse here or monster here, which is five, um, so five socks or this one here, which I'm sure is seven. Let me just see if I can find it real quick. Yes, here is seven. So what you can do is you can do um, five order five uh, five cards of seven here to make the order to complete the order, or you can do seven uh, of these cards to complete the order. And then you are just trying to pump out as many orders as possible. It is a collaborative game. So you are not trying to beat each other. You are trying to beat the clock, which I love collaborative math games because again, low pressure. And then you can spice the game up a little bit by adding these extra cards in, but we don't really do that. So this is a fun game. If, you, if collaborative games are your thing, if you're like me, if you love the participation trophies too, <laughs> then this is awesome. I really like this one. I wish I had found it years ago. We've only had it for about a year and a half, um, but that would have been valuable, so valuable, so many years ago.
All right, this game is called Money Bags, and it is a money counting game. And the way that this works, let me zoom out a little bit here. So the way this works is you place one of each coin here on Money Bags, and that's the pot, so it's 41 cents because you place like one quarter, one dime, one nickel, one penny. And then you put the remaining coins on the side, so this is the bank where you'll exchange money. It's just anywhere along the side. And then each person takes their little character. You grab a character here and they stick it on the start. Right there. So then they spin the, um, or they roll the dice. Sorry, a little rusty. It's like I have to see it to remember it. Okay, so they roll the dice there. And that is um, how much money they earn. So then you spin the spinner and you see what you cannot take. So they earned 55 cents, but they cannot take nickels. So they have to make 55 cents without taking a nickel. So then it's the next player's turn. You just go on and on. If the bank runs out of a particular coin, then everybody has to help uh, exchange coins. So you're constantly just counting coins. Everybody puts in a quarter and like takes two dimes and a nickel or something like that. So they're constantly reinforcing that skill. And then if you land here uh, on this sign, you get the money from here and then you replace that. And then also if you land on the change it up spot, you get to exchange some of your change for higher value. So like you can exchange your quarters for dollars or you can exchange all of your pennies for nickels or dimes. And then you also collect 10% interest as well. So when somebody reaches finish, um, they take the money bags pot and they add it to their pot and then they count their money individually and the player with the most money wins. So it's not, you don't have to, um, first of all, you don't have to land on the exact number to get to the finish, but it's just when one person gets to the finish, then you all count your money. So it's a fun one. It just reinforces counting coins in so many different ways. So counting coins while you're not able to use certain coins, exchanging money, um, grabbing one of every coin, and then everybody contributing to fixing the bank when it runs out of money. So it's a great way to work on counting change. Okay, the, the very last game I have to show you is Pizza Fraction Fun. There are quite a few different ways to play this game, so I'm gonna go through the easiest way, which we're already set up for, which is spinner number one, which is the one that we can use with all of our kids. The other spinners, which I'll show you in here. So you've got spinner one, and then you've got um, Spinner six, where is this one? Spinner one. There's some different spinners in here and it's different grade levels for each one, each different game. So spinner one is here, then you've got spinner two, three, four, five, and six. But like I said, we're just gonna go with spinner one. So you plug the little pizza into here and then you have spinner one. So the way you play this, is you would have the kids spin. They can only build two pizzas, so up to two pizzas. So you've got half, so they would go through these piles. Now you have the actual uh, fraction side facing down. So they would pick what they think is half. Oops, this moved. Well, pretend it still says half. They would check it. If it says half, they get to keep it with their fraction side up. Next person spins. Oh, they lose, they lose a turn. Okay, so then it's your turn again. Say you get sixth, one sixth. So then you go through the pizza. So then they go over to the pizza and they say, I think this looks like a sixth. If it is a sixth, again, fraction side up. Say and on their next turn, they spin another half. They can then select a second half and start a second pizza. So they continue doing this. You've got like a ninth, an eighth, a quarter. So say they've got two, they've got two eighths and then they get a quarter. So the quarter doesn't fit there. So then they can add it over here. So then choose means you can choose um, any additional 
piece that would fit your pizza. You can do swap where you swap with somebody else for a different size than one of your pieces. And then you can always exchange between your pizzas, I believe. So this is a great visual for fractions. And then like I said, it gets a little more difficult to where it's almost like fourth and fifth grade level stuff. So if you don't have younger ones, there are other ways to play this, but this is the best way for our whole family to play together. So, and then it goes, the first person to, um, complete one pizza. You only have to complete one, but you can be building two at a time. So I think that is just super fun and a really great visual and um, really helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if it was helpful for you, give it a thumbs up. Let me know some of your favorite resources in the comments down below. And also just a disclaimer, I am an Usborne consultant. So the links that are down below for Usborne are my own personal links, but I like to say this to you guys so that you really support your friends. If any of these Usborne books looked interesting to you and you have a really close friend and you want to support their business, take my uh take my advice and recommendations and go support your friends businesses okay thank you guys for watching today's video and i will see you soon bye guys